Earth. Her name is Erin Moriarty, and she's 29 years old. 20, and she's 29? A actress. But she's decided to completely so change beautiful. her face. She's this so is a beautiful. of her before, which I think was. Okay, I think she's beautiful. Not my kind. She's pretty beautiful. She's like, pretty, pretty beautiful. Face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like, for me, you know, do you think like if Pirikri was was blonde, she would look like this? Because she also she oh, has like hey. she also has like these. Uh, you no, also have this. A, chin. A, she, I, she has triangular. I have. Uh, oh, you have squared. Squared. Yeah. Are you squared? Do you mean <laughs> I don't know what I mean? Then. <laughs> no. Okay. What is Relatively mean? recent, you know, within the past year or so. Very beautiful girl. So beautiful that she was becoming a very famous Hollywood actress. Put on camera and on screen and on multiple shows and movies. Now look at her. Look at that. Oh, She's got oh my the Kim God! Kardashian shit. Okay, lips. could you please pause? I She's wanna. I wanna. Her nose. Could you please pause? You wanna analyze? Yeah, I think she got done this nose lip, lip, nose nose job. Oh my God! Lip fillers. She removed a bit of like thing to structure the face. Please take this bone. Which one? Uh, thing, oh to yeah. The face or maybe something here. She and she got this lifted. This, if you see yeah. the eyes. So you know what happens? I feel that uh, whenever women they do this, they be they get like this bitch face. They don't get bitch face. No, no, you know, know what I'm saying? Like this, like this mean, mean bitch face. You yeah, know? because the eyebrows get lifted. Yeah, it's like they become like this. No, no, I, I, I don't like it at all. They, the, their eyes, they get no emotions. Yeah, they, they lose no emotions. Yeah, here, like here she, she looks the, so pretty. Yeah, you know, like like a, a good beautiful girl. Yeah, and look at like, look at her now. This also, is there's the a Kim lot Kardashian of makeup. Yeah, lips. Imagine without makeup now. This she's it made her nose so skinny. It looks like a pencil now. She's got like what appear to me to be cheek implants. You know, you like yeah. huge the cheekbones are like oh, out yeah. to here. Look at she look like a nice, beautiful. She got microblading for eyebrows. Gal, and I'm sorry not to pick on this Moriarty gal. And so nice. <laughs> this, like more and more young women are doing this, Michael. Yeah. It's not about an objection to plastic surgery. It's about an obsession with turning yourself into this fake version of yourself yeah. into like truly like a kim kardashian disciple it's so toxic with the enormous lips and the teeny tiny nose and the huge overdone fillered cheeks i don't know what's in there mm -hmm. and I, I i find it like a sign of mental illness it's extremely upsetting it's a it's a massive turnoff to me i really want to get in the heads of these young girls and say please don't do this what do you make of it it's not wait, wait, before he does, what do you think about this, uh, this, what, what she said? That uh, it comes to a point that feels like mental illness. Because I kind of agree, man. Uh, if you have, you look that beautiful, and you look beautiful, and you think that you're not beautiful, to a point that you go and you, and you go to a, this level of makeover of your face, where mm -hmm. you lift, you put chicken plants, you remove your nose, you do this, you do that, uh, lips fill. It's like you do a complete change on your face. Mm -hmm. Like, w what do you think about that? I feel like it's so damaging for the, a every girl. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, definitely it's uh, about insecurities, and also a lot of like these cases are a part of body dysmorphia mm -hmm. like uh, I was reading this article by Megan Fox it's, it's, she gave some interview mm -hmm. and she was like she has been struggling with body dysmorphia for many years no matter how uh, beautiful she is and everyone thinks that she is beautiful she is hot and everything mm -hmm. but she doesn't feel beautiful you know and uh, that's the thing like uh, no matter so, so how it's, people see you, but if you're not feeling beautiful, so it's mental illness, right? It is because, it is. like, if you're beautiful, everyone confirms that you're beautiful. Yeah, it is a fact in real life that is beautiful. And if in your mind and you, your brain and your you know mental, you are always saying that you're not beautiful, that you have some problem in this thing, it is some kind of mental illness. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of these insecurities they're turning into this body dys uh, dysmorphia because. Mm -hmm. You are getting feeded by this 24-7. Have a good one, Andrea. Thanks for coming, man. You know? So it's getting worse and worse.
Yeah. Because of social media and you. And now we're gonna have these AI models. And you have access to do. And now you have AI models. Yeah. I feel like also w- one thing that happens, like for example, with VTubers, right? Mm. They create like this VTuber uh, version of themselves, or uh, no, it's not that of themselves. Okay, I feel like a lot of women they also use these VTubing things to because it's more comfortable, mm. or maybe you know they are they are not as confident on their looks. Mm. You know, there's like so, so many things that it can be, mm-hmm. but definitely they create a much more attractive version for the stream yeah. that they think is more attractive than them, right? Yeah, yeah. So... It's so, like a hiding behind just because you can. And you be hi- hiding, hiding behind, behind a PNG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm not saying, like, VTubers, like, they, they actually, a few of them, they look insane. Especially yeah. nowadays, like, it is insane how uh, the, the physics, you know, not only the boobs, but yeah. the jingles, but also the hair, everything jingles. Like, it, it looks so realistic. Is it kind of impressive how yeah. far, like, VTubing technology came, right? Uh, but still, I hope it doesn't come from a place, again, of, of like, super and... hardcore insecurity, you know? It's so sad. Yeah. Just an individual mental illness. It's actually a social illness. The reason... Oh, a social a illness. Something like this, and she's not the only one is because we're living in hyper reality this is a concept developed by the philosopher oh, this is interesting. Baudrillard uh, expounded upon by a great twitter account named Vocal Distance I had him on my show not too long ago to talk about it hyper reality is the idea that you know back in the old long time ago days uh, someone would go to a bush and pick a strawberry and eat the strawberry and say oh this strawberry is really really good but if you want an even more concentrated version of the strawberry flavor. You can you can make squeeze it and make strawberry juice, right? Mm. And then if you want it to be even more intense than that, you could could, you could make a kind of a a strawberry concentrate out of it. And then Mm. one day a candy maker is gonna come along and he's gonna say, you know, I think we're gonna take this strawberry flavor, we're gonna make uh, strawberry ice cream out of it or a strawberry gummy. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna get that flavor and we're gonna make it into a, some kind of candy. And then, you know, we're gonna actually, we're gonna make a, a Jolly Rancher out of the strawberry. And now, you know what? We're gonna make a Jolly Rancher soda out of the strawberry Jolly Rancher, out of the candy, out of the concentrate, out of the juice of the strawberry. You get to the end of this and the strawberry Jolly Rancher soda doesn't taste anything like an actual strawberry. Yeah. You've concentrated yeah. it. You've intensified it so much. It's become such a caricature of itself that it's totally unrecognizable. It's lost its core identity. This is what happens with... To these girls. Um, exactly. appearances today. And I think it's a result of, as you say, reality TV. It's a result of social media. It's there was a, such a great analogy. I know. Right? The, the way they dissected that... Oh, you, first, you start from the natural yeah. fruit... And then each time you go through this process that you start dissecting, you know, in concentration, concentration, concentration. And now yeah. you end up with something plastic, like a gummy. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, and that's exactly... This doesn't have that flavor itself. Like, it's a completely different thing, yeah. in a way. And uh, it loses the, the, the identity, the originality, yeah. the... It, it is... That was a good explanation. It was a very, very good explanation. I, I, For me, I always, every time, especially, like, I completely have empathy for those that have, you know, physical problems. Mm. You know, you have a big nose, maybe you have a scar, maybe you have something that you really don't like that affects you deeply, Your, you, you know, your self-esteem. But I, it's super hard for me to find the empathy whenever someone looks that beautiful and yeah and they are still doing the same and treat themselves like they are this kind of very ugly person mm. you know so i feel like what i feel like they don't uh, they aren't grateful already they are not they don't have uh, great, uh gratitude for or how they look you know I think insecurities and all these social media shit, they it overpowers their emotion of feeling grateful about what they have. Mm-hmm. You know, 
No yeah. one really wants to look or reach to that point, but they reach, and why they are reaching? That's that's a big thing. And it's say. not only with looks, right? It's with everything because you go to to social media, yeah. and uh, like you said, it's a hyper reality. It feels like, oh, if I have a house, okay, a house is not enough. I need uh, like a mansion, or I need three mansions, yeah. or uh, one car is not enough. Or maybe I have a BMW. Oh, BMW now sucks. I, I need to have a Ferrari. If that's a suck, okay. So it's like. I need now to have two. So yeah, everything it makes you always feel like nothing that you have is is enough. Enough. Also, we compare our lives with these top notch people. Mm -hmm. You know that also yeah. makes you feel like oh fuck, you have nothing. Yeah. You know, before it used to be like your neighbor. If your neighbor has a car, you're gonna buy one car. But now you have fucking these big celebrities they are sharing their life and you're like oh fuck you know yeah you're comparing <laughs> your life in a small village or a small medium-sized town to the to the the center of la or yeah, living yeah. in the Hollywood mansion you know or the you know have a a penthouse in the middle of the Madison Square or so, whatever you know yeah no Madison Square no like the, the Manhattan uh, mm. area right it, it is it is very very daunting and uh, that was also one of the reasons why i started getting rid of my social media and not spending as much time even if i do spend some time as a uh, because you know we're content creators and uh, more and more i try to stay up to the to the trends but i i try to do a like a very i think i did this block like a few years back, mm -hmm. probably maybe three or four years back, I, I got to a point I was like, okay, this is enough. I will not let this affect me because all I felt it was always like shit. Yeah. You know, it felt like nothing that I had was enough. And also traveling to fucking India, thank fucking God, it gave me so much gratitude and I'm so grateful nowadays for my life, for what I have. Mm -hmm. Because before, I was always, always, always thinking that I needed more, 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 more. Yeah. And it was exhausting, exhausting, man. It's a result of all of these bizarre fads. Oh, women with fuller lips uh, are more attractive than women with thinner lips. Okay, now we're going to balloon our lips out. So balloon. That they take up Literally balloon your lips. Oh, women with uh, more curves are more attractive than pencil-shaped women. Okay, well, now we're going to take it completely out of proportion, and it becomes grotesque and ghastly. Uh, I... I, I really hesitate in any way to I like the subtitle said I, 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 yeah. but it's a social phenomenon so many women are doing it and so i beg them i implore them i say ladies plastic surgery almost never i don't maybe not one single time ever has made someone look better all of these cosmetic procedures are oh, I don't okay okay Th this is not true yeah this is not true yeah i will say if you are beautiful or good looking most of the times doesn't make you look good. Yeah. I, I will say like, I will agree with it. 99% of the times doesn't make the person look good if you're already good looking. But there are other cases. I think there that, is like 5% of the people. Yeah. They do like really smartly, you know. Yeah. They just do a small change and they mm -hmm. never touch their faces and their face, it changes. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, exactly. Know? So that happens. There are good examples of uh, plastic surgeries. Penta was saying, uh, some random guy on social media will always have something negative to say. People will even have a problem with the way some someone breathes. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and it, it does affect the mental health, no matter how confident you are. Still, once the comment can make you feel like shit. Yeah, yeah. We, we were true. actually speaking about this uh, a while back, that... I was saying that uh, the way I now I fight that is understand that that comment is really not about me. Mm. Is always understand that someone has a bad comment about you, about your looks, something personal, whatever it is, the way you speak, the way you look, the way, whatever, even like the way you breathe, right? Yeah. Understand that that person probably is in a very negative place in their lives something yeah. is happening and i just have the empathy towards that person to understand that man i feel sad for them mm. i really because i cannot imagine a world 
that I will ever go to someone else's comments mm -hmm. and say, yo, you're a fat bitch. Yeah. I can't imagine myself, except if I'm deeply depressed, angry at life. Alone. Alone. Or something is going very wrong in my life. Yeah. I, I can never even imagine me, myself, doing that. So that's why now I use that strategy. I just apply empathy and I feel like I read that thing and it's like, man, I, I hope you're doing well. Yeah. And uh, not only I'm saying this, and I, 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 can, I can actually prove that a few times, whenever uh, this stream, I used to have like, uh, like one, 100 viewers, right? I received on Discord like 200, 300 messages, right? And a few people were mean to me. And the way I always replied to it, because I didn't give them the pets or because I wasn't fair or because I was rude to them and I just called, yo, you're annoying, bitch. Just shut up. And mm -hmm. I banned them. Mm -hmm. They used to come on Discord and they used to spam me and, you know, like mad and things. And I said, hey, uh, I, I just hope that whatever you're going through, uh, I, hope, I hope the best for you. You know, mm -hmm. that's I, how I always replied. Most of the times, people didn't know how to respond to kindness. Yeah, yeah. Because you always expect if someone is being rude to you... Because you are there to fight. You yeah, know? yeah, they and are ready. They are like, they're... They, to trigger they're knives and like, oh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna spike you, man. No, they, they put these comments because they want to trigger you. And then you comment back and they comment back and they let their frustration out. Yeah. But if you put the kindness... They go completely blank. Yeah, it's like, how how, why are these guys being kind to me? Like, yeah. no, I, I always said that. And they yeah. go speechless sometimes. Yeah. They, it or, was, you, or you don't respond at all. Yeah. It was very rare where they tried to go back to the fighting mode. Most of the times, like, or they didn't answer or they be, uh, backpedal. Yeah. They said, oh, maybe I'm sorry also. Yeah, but, but there is this thing. If you don't have this awareness of trollers, mm -hmm. you can get into a new insecurity like yeah. you never which you never had for example i'm making something and someone comes and say oh your jaw is like a, a sedan some no that was <laughs> that was no different your jaw is like this and that yeah I, I never had insecurity maybe i will develop that insecurity that mm -hmm. happens with a lot of people but it's for that it's very necessary to know that trollers and their psychology yeah but, but that's right? what, when you have to use your intellect yeah. and just yeah. practice like you have to think you know you have to use more rationality and less emotion yeah and just understand who gives a fuck if you think my head is big probably yours is too but i also don't care mm. but if you always go like yeah you also have a big whatever you you're this you're that, you're that. bro it's a never-ending thing that yeah. he's gonna insult you back you're gonna insult you back and i always think that as a content creator, the more awareness you bring to these trollers, the more trollers you're going to have. So, for example, if a troller comes to the chat, for example, Penta starts saying, yo, Indes, you have such a white face, you look like Casper. You know? It is true, <laughs> okay? But she could say that in a mean way. Mm. And I say, yo, Penta, you shut up, blah, blah, blah. And I give like a lot of attention to it. What will happen? It is a snowball effect that yeah. other people will come to the chat and they will start doing that mm -hmm. because they want me to get triggered yeah. and get that attention from me, you know? Mm. So yeah, true. That, that's just how it is. I don't or agree with that. I don't agree with that. I've seen a lot. Oh, I've seen a lot of women. <laughs> oh, she didn't agree with that. Yeah, I didn't yeah, agree too. Jobs. That's what we said. And men. I've seen that too. Look, I'm not against plastic surgery. This is something else. This is like a mental disorder. This is extreme. When you start off incredibly beautiful and yeah. you end up like a plastic Barbie version. Okay. I don't know if Penta saw, so I'm just going to sneak peek. So maybe there was like these boys actress. I think she was there. She's a, yeah. it's beautiful, beautiful. And she turned into this. So just to give some context for the yeah. new viewers, it is incredible. Yeah. Incredible, this, this, this change, man. Surgery. This is something else. This is like a mental disorder. Plastic Barbie version of a Kardashian. Like, <laughs> and who did that to her? 
who is the surgeon who said, yes, I will keep going. Yes, I will stick all sorts of crap into your cheeks and I will give you the I'll make you beautiful. nose job, the L extreme nose job to where you're basically your nose has disappeared. You know, it's like just a tiny little line down your face now. And I will right. pump your lips up to where like there's no space between the top one and your nose and your bottom one and the base of your chin. This you're making these people look other like ai like other than human and when i actually saw no, this is AI, not even ai ai, AI, AI listen yeah a, a, this is not ai you know what guys what is ai this this is ai, AI chat is more natural ai looking. is even more perfect look at this chat natural this is fucking ai this doesn't look ai okay she looks like a bad surgery and i feel like there should be an ethical thing for surgery and say no i'm not gonna do that surgery yeah. whatever you ask me is stupid but no they don't want to do that because she probably paid fifty thousand dollars for all that junk and and that's it yeah no i'll tell you how it works uh i went for this uh uh dental treatment for, for my braces so i went to this clinic uh and they also use these uh fillers and all that stuff and also they have dental services yeah. So I was kind of worried about uh, my face changing after my teeth placement and all that yeah. stuff. She put it braces. Yeah. So the the doctor that that people they said that uh, yeah, uh it's going to change a bit but what you can do is you can get the fillers done on your top lip. You know? If you want. If you want. But they gave me these suggestions. Mm -hmm. That so was that the first option, clinic, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the surgery options also. Yeah, yeah. And I went to another clinic who was just run by dentist no surgery nothing mm -hmm. and i asked the same question sure uh, do i need surgery after this and she was like no you don't need to do anything yeah you she said, you're beautiful you won't need anything yeah so that was the difference if you're going to these surgeon clinics yeah. they're gonna give you this shit they're gonna make you feel like oh fuck you have a this nose I, maybe you should fix the tip yeah you go for the nose you you leave the the the, the, um, the appointment with a whole face yeah, right? because they make you insecure, you know? Yeah. They're like, oh, fuck, you have such a large jaw. You should, you know, mm. thin your face or something like that. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. It's a business. It's a business. Yeah, that's why but these it, people it feels end up unethical, like, man. It, feels it is. A, it feels unethical. I saw her photos. I thought, is this an AI-generated face? Is this real? Maybe this is just like a scandal somebody's put together to get people talking. Because um, sometimes people do that. But apparently, it's real. She's done this to herself. And look, she's not the only one. I... I would be lying if I didn't say my whole family stopped and look at, looked at the latest pictures of Lauren Sanchez, who's engaged to Jeff Bezos. I don't know what she's done to herself. You know, she is Lauren? Looks nothing like she used to You're, look. Look at this. Yes, when she was younger, but even when she first started to date him, I don't know what's happened to the cheeks. The breasts are out to here. The face now this is how she looks. Prodded. She's going out in her lingerie now. This is the latest. Here first. She used to look to like this. Him. I don't mm -hmm. know. And now she looks like She's this. Going out in her lingerie oh. now. This is the latest thing to wear a thong under. Also, one hundred percent. I'm so sure that Jeff Bezos was on fucking steroids. I'm so sure. Certain. He probably does like blood infusions and so many weird ass things that millionaires they do. Billionaires they have access Underwear to like all these treatments. And just some lace overlay on top of it. I I'm hate sorry, these she women. Looks like a hooker. That is, you look like a hooker, and you're dating the richest man in the world or one of them. Like, try to be a little classy. Must everything be a, oh. an expose of? Your I have that's not, so true. But you know what? You're obviously not everyone. Not everyone can look classy because it needs some elegant mm -hmm. elegance. To look like a hooker, you need to do certain things, you know? It's mm. easy to look like a hooker than look yeah. classy. Oh, 100%. Year. But I was going to say, I have nothing against the dress, yeah. you know? Like, it's just like, no, it's agree. just the, the face. But I kind of don't agree with this, uh, her saying hooker. Mm. I don't agree. Maybe you're talking no, no, about I, plastic. I, I, no, I, I think like think she's talking fine. about the whole, pla the, the whole package, mm. you know? Like, that face, those plastic big boobs... And that dress makes her look like a hooker. Mm. I think that's where she's going for. Mm -hmm. I will not agree. Like, I don't think the dress by itself makes you look like a hooker. I think that's fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, but I think, like, I can understand, like, the whole image makes mm -hmm. you look like, a, you know, like those 50-year-old hookers. Over-enhanced assets. Daughter looking at that. 
And I don't want my sauce looking at it either, but we did, because there it was on, in the New York Post. It was hard to avoid. And where are we all looking at it? We're all looking at it on our screens, which is exactly the point that you're making. It, 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 the way that these women are modifying themselves and even just dressing and, and presenting themselves is like a, an AI robot of a person. But that's because the... the Please then, shut up about this AI yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not AI. Bro, they... Oh, okay, this is triggering me. They, have, they are so fucking clueless what is a, a, yeah. AI nowadays, you know? beauty that we see around us now is in, in a few topics they are right yeah in this ai thing they are so so outdated is not in the real world with, with which we uh interact decreasing every single day but it's the it's our screens and and you know photographs make everyone look a little bit different than they do in real life and especially with all of the uh digital enhancements that That's people true. can make yeah. they look rather different uh, you know even than they would have 10 or 20 years ago, and so we, we become uh, totally sucked into this virtual reality. Now add on to that the ideological dimension uh, of, of liberation. You know, I, I think part of the reason why the transgender movement became such a craze over the last six or seven years is because of this technological fact. The more that we live in the digital world, the less our bodies matter, the less we identify with our bodies. Huh? Okay, uh, it's just a bit okay. complicated for the, me. Okay, this, uh, this was such a big stretch. The, you were saying that now with these uh, modifications that you can do with the filters in uh, plastic surgery, there is an advanced movement on transgender people because now we do not identify any longer with our bodies. I feel like this is such a fucking terrible take. I didn't get it still. He's saying that... Because nowadays we want to transform our bodies, mm -hmm. we uh, use filters, we change ourselves, yeah. the way we look. We get disassociated with the identity of being a, a man or a woman. Oh. And because of that, the transgender movement is progressing. I feel like no, this is a, such a terrible bullshit. fucking take. There that's is nothing. Bullshit. There is nothing to do with with that. Yeah, in my opinion. That's bullshit. Even the way that we speak about our relationship feels our like a very conservative is, is in a approach. Way, approach and take. We we talk about our true selves, you know, being trapped in a certain body, and and so if the body doesn't accurately reflect our true selves, whatever that means, then we're just going to chop our bodies up. Uh, this is a major shift from the way that for all of Western civilization we, we thought about our souls and bodies, which is that they're in a hylomorphic union forever as long as we exist on this earth. Uh, but if you think, no, my body is just an accident, you know, and I can, I can change it to better correspond to my true metaphysical self, then you're going to start chopping yourself up and ballooning out other parts and injecting poison into your face. And there's really no end of that. You know, it's a real, not to, not to sound too religious here, but it's a real trick of the devil. It's just a vice and an addiction and a temptation that's going to leave you looking. Okay, at some point, I agree that it can start getting to be an addiction. Yeah, addiction part, I agree. That uh, these, you want to tweak these, tweak that, tweak these, and at the end of the day, it's going to completely change the way you are. Yeah. I, but I don't agree with the rest. I, uh, I don't agree with the transgender. <laughs> the, the transgender take what kind of, uh, yo, Praja, welcome, welcome to the stream, buddy. In the most extreme case, like Michael Jackson, which seems to be the standard of beauty that a lot of young women are aiming toward. <laughs> the Michael Jackson knows. That's so true, man. Yeah. He's going to do Michael Jackson. But you know Jackson what knows. happens? Mm. Uh, people who do this, it gets normal for them if they look at their mirror, look at themselves in the mirror. Mm -hmm. It's very normal for them, so they keep doing, doing, doing. So for them, it's a perfection. But for other people, it's like looking like something else. You know, depends on what they are looking at yeah. and what they are consuming. They they have to really look because if all every day, all day, you're looking to these perfect women. It, yeah, you're gonna it, get into you're this. gonna get into this thing. Yeah. You're gonna develop some illness or something, and uh, and nothing, no matter how you look, is gonna be enough. Yeah, yes, or like that's that uh, that socialite. She's Swiss, I think. They call her the Catwoman online, where she's yeah. like you can't even recognize. She looks like a oh, cat. you she know this like one, cat the Catwoman. I think so. I just look. This nowadays is art. I feel she's like a these statue. Are unethical plastic surgeons. Someone needs to say 
I used to watch that show Nip Tuck back in the day. It was entertaining. Then Nip it got Tuck. Really weird and dark, but it was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, somebody needs to step in when you see that you've got an addict here. You know, you, like the yeah. same way that the bartender will say when the guy's barfing at the end of the bar asking for another glass of scotch, it's time for you to stop, sir. The plastic surgeon needs to say, yeah. it's time for you to stop, madam. Like you've gone too far. This is yeah. an aesthetic. No, but okay. Okay, you want to say? I think I think they don't have right to say unless it's very unhealthy for them and they're going to maybe die if they put more cc's on their breast because no it, I, it's I, a, I feel it's like on, a, it's on people at some, it's some like point they don't have to say but I think it's unethical that they don't say they on the other hand they got maybe so far into the plastic surgeries that they are like but doctor look at me now I am so fucked you know, you got to fix me again because this is not looking good. This is not what I wanted. You understand? Like, what's he going to say? He's going to say no. But he said one more surgery. Probably she's still got, is, 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 at some point it's like, now probably that beautiful girl did this. I am so certain because of this backlash. She's going to try to fix She's going to go back yeah. to the same surgeon or yeah. a different one. Yeah. And the, the new guy is going to say, don't worry, ma'am, we'll fix you. And then you enter on this snowball effect, yeah. you know, this treadmill effect that uh, every time you try to fix it, you're going to make it worse. Yeah. And uh, you'll you, never leave yeah. it. You'll never leave it. <clears throat> that you're going for. It should literally be a nip or a tuck. It shouldn't be like this drastic makeover of already beautiful women who are obviously suffering mentally. That's my own judgment. I realize I'm passing it and it's not my life to lead. It's theirs. I just feel like I really hope this isn't the truth for my daughter when she gets older. And I hope it's not the truth for America's daughters. Because, you know, it, the it's point all you just made, fine. Is, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's so important because what you said is, look, there's an objective standard here. And we can tell that, OK, if you want to do a little bit, little bit of work here or there, maybe that's within reason. But the people who totally transform themselves in this way that is making them look worse, that, that we, we shouldn't be doing that. Someone should intervene. But what that implies is that there are objective standards. There's objective standards of health, of sanity, of beauty, of truth, of morality. And I certainly think that. I think reasonable people think that. But in yeah. our culture, we're, we're told now that everything is subjective, everything is relative, and mm -hmm. the only moral criterion that matters is consent. So if an adult consents to do something, increasingly even if a child consents to do something, if you ask the left, then they should be permitted to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right wingers, boys. Yeah. I, I was, I was coming from this. I, I cannot, you know, like, because it was a very conservative take when it came to transgender. Yeah. Uh, and I can see, like, this is a conservative guy. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean, like, sometimes uh, right wing also is not right about the certain things and is wrong about others. Same with left. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I feel like it goes both ways. But here, it is more like the, the, you know what is the shots he, he kind of drop some shots like oh we, we even give consent to minors it's probably what he's talking about is like now you can change your sex even in portugal they you can literally change your gender uh if you're a minor mm. and uh, minor like below 18 yeah below 18 really yeah you're like 13 and say okay now i identify myself as a as a girl and i yeah, in biological i'm a guy but do you think it should be like that? I think in that sense, I'm a bit more conservative just because of this. Yeah. I feel like if you're 13, you are still very, very young to understand the causes and the consequences of such, uh, steps. such, such a decision, you know? Yeah. Also, like, there is uh, this biological thing that your brain is still in development. Yeah, and also there are man, big chances that uh, you can also get influenced. Yeah, you know? influenced by social media, influenced yeah. by by trends. Yeah. Uh, so, but I have no objection at all if you're like eighteen or above. Yeah. Just do whatever you want. Yeah. With minors, I I feel a bit sensitive yeah, about it. Same. Um, but uh, if you're 18 plus, I feel like just do whatever you want. You want to change, you want to whatever. And I feel sensitive uh, about minors because me as a minor did a lot of shitty shit. Uh -huh. 
which that I now, now you I look think... back and you regret, right? And yeah. you're like, man, man that yeah. was so dumb. And for at uh, that time, it was like uh, the best season ever. I yeah, think, you know, yeah. So it we all had that, right? Yeah. That that's part of the teenage years. Mm -hmm. Even if it's uh, going to harm them, even if it's objectively disordered. True or false? Using your tax refund to pay off. Okay, I mean. To be honest, uh, this this situation, uh, I, I don't see it getting better uh, in the next years. Now we have like this uh, AI modeling coming into the place, right? Uh, 